uh, I had the misfortune while riding my motorbike to work, uh, struck a deer while I was going, I guess, about 120 kilometers an hour. And uh, don't recall the actual collision. I just know about 20 minutes later, I was standing in the middle of the road. And so a dead deer about 25 meters to one side and my motorbike about 25 meters in the other direction. Uh, I had sustained uh, nine root fractures in this side. I had a, a pneumohemothorax on this side. I had uh, fractured uh, a bone in my hand, a bone in my foot, I had a cerebral contusion and a big third degree burn. So I spent, you know, all told almost a month in the hospital, you know, and several, th three surgeries during that period. So it was nice to see uh, what it was like to get care from the other side of the stethoscope, so to speak. We had no hot water in any of the burn trauma units, rooms on the one wing, uh, which I discovered one day and I, when I first got there, I went to the bathroom, went to wash my hands and there was no hot water and I inquired of one of the nurses, it seems there's no hot water, to which she answered, oh yes, yeah, since they worked on the, uh, did the remodeling of the emergency department, which is just below the floor I was on, we haven't had any hot water. And I said, how can that be? She said, oh, they said it can't be fixed, which seemed preposterous, but I didn't push it much. And then on the next shift, I asked the nurse, there are 12 hour shifts there. On the next uh, shift, I asked that nurse and she, and she gave me the same story. Oh, it's been about five or six months and they said it can't be fixed. So a couple days later, uh, uh, a technician was there to replace a shower head in our, in our bathroom because it had some calcium scale for, uh, but the, 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 we all cold water. And I mentioned it to the technician. I said, by the way, I said, who takes care of hot water? Do you know anything about that? And he goes, oh, it'd be me. I said, we don't have any hot water. And he said, you're kidding. He says, there's hot water. I said, go try it. And he goes in the bathroom, comes out and says, you're right, there's no hot water. And I said, and there's none in any of the rooms on this uh, floor, on this wing of the floor. And he checked and that was true. And like 25 minutes later, we all had hot water. And as he left the room, and my wife was sitting there at the time visiting. And he said, in good humor, and we were in good humor back and forth. I was kidding with him. I mean, you have to have a good sense of humor. And, uh, and he said, hey, tell the nurses, I don't tell them how to pass meds and they shouldn't figure out how to fix hot water. And he walked out. And uh, later I kidded the nurse, I said, do I get some kind of rebate here that I was the one that managed to get hot water back on the floor? And, and the real point here is that not that the nurses were bad and that's not it at all, but they were not the only ones that made this occur. And yet someone, I don't know who that someone was, apparently asked somebody and were told it can't be fixed. And then it, become, it became, well, it can't be fixed and everybody just gave up. And you know, I wonder if, if it was their home and they came home and there was no hot water and they called the plumber or whoever and they said, oh, uh, we can't fix that. You won't have hot water in your house anymore where they had been as sanguine and said, oh, well, I guess we don't have hot water. So, I mean, some of those things worry me that we see in culture where people will see outcomes that aren't what are ideal or what we wish and then someone gives them some rationale why it's okay and then they just give up instead of saying, putting themselves in that situation or try to personalize it more and think, if this, if this were me, if it were my child, if it were me as the patient, is that a reasonable answer that we don't have hot water? At 6 a.m., the nurses that were going off would disrobe you, scrub your burns down to, you know, the bare, bare wound bed, uh, which isn't pleasant, and then they would just cover you with a wet sheet and you would lie there for about an hour and a half until the rounding team came to see you. They'd spend, you know, maybe two minutes if you're lucky, leave, and then it would be another hour and a half before someone came to redress your wound and dry, give you dry bed clothes. And, and uh, that's kind of cold when the temperature is like, you know, 20 degrees, 21 degrees C, and you have a wet sheet on you for three hours, you're shivering by the end. I mean, it's, it's not courteous, it's not good for the patients, and it's really kind of arrogant on the part of the care providers. And, and I mentioned it the next time I came around. I said, you know, why don't you do this differently? So they then offered me a blanket after they made rounds. And you'd still lie there for an hour and a half. So, I mean, some of those things, the arrogant way in which we do things which are uh, for the benefit of the physician or the nurse to make their job easier. And we seem to lose, fact, lose sight of the fact that we should be thinking about, we're here to take care of the patient. And it's not to be what's convenient for us and then we'll you know, give them whatever care fits within our convenience mode. And I think there was some of that. I wouldn't say it was deliberate arrogance, but they just had been acculturated. That's the way they always did it. And they continue to do it that way. Uh, 
there's three questions I would ask any health professional. They should ask themselves and they should answer yes to each one uh, if they think they're truly professional. And the first is, is the care I'm, if the care I'm, I'm providing was on the front page of the newspaper where I'd be proud to have my friends, family, colleagues, and patients read it? That would be one. The answer should be yes. Uh, the second question would be if, um, uh, if this were someone I love being cared for, would this care be satisfactory for them? The answer should be yes, otherwise why are you delivering it? And the third is slightly different, but along the same lines, is if I witness a patient getting care that wouldn't comply with those first two questions that someone else is delivering, it is my moral obligation to intercede to understand it better, to perhaps, maybe I don't understand it, or perhaps I see something the person rendering care doesn't understand or doesn't see themselves because they're so focused on the task at hand. And I see it, if I do nothing, I've deliberately made a decision that I don't care about that patient. The person actually engaged in this behavior might innocently not know what's going on. And to not be willing to get involved is really shirking our responsibility. And I think that's probably the toughest. And I think in many cases, if we would ask healthcare providers, can they answer yes to those three? The answer would be no. In fact, I don't think they think about it that way. If they did, they would do things differently. So. While it's good if the patient's active, there's a penalty. There can be a penalty to that because of human nature. And to rely on the patient to be the one to speak up is not really quite fair. I think patients should try to be uh, active. I know I was, but there's some things I bit my tongue on too because I thought it's not a big deal. I can endure this. And to do otherwise would possibly cause me more inconvenience or a suboptimal care in the future. And I made deliberate decision to say nothing at that point. Fortunately, I was in a position that I could do something about it later to benefit other patients. But for myself, it wasn't really the, I didn't believe it was strategically the smartest move to make. And I think that's unfortunate. I think the big thing is having a system, and I don't think the system where I was cared for has that system has a system that looks for where things don't do as well as they might, and what do we do to do better? And I think uh, this is a problem we see, and I think we see it everywhere, not just in the US, we see it here in New Zealand. I've heard conversations just like this since I've been here, where people said, well, it would be good if we tell everybody what they're doing well. And I go, I expect everybody should be doing well in what they do every time. What they should want to know is not that I did well, that shows they're insecure to me. Uh, they should be thinking about, how is it that I could do better? That's what winners do. Winners want to know how to do better. They don't worry about where they're doing well. They assume they do well. They assume how to do better. And I think we need to look at it that way and have the confidence that we will do well, that our team members will do well, and to constantly be solicitous of the comments that say, how can I make it better?